Uh, my name is Richard Rushing. I am Chief Security Officer for Air Defense. We're a wireless security monitoring company. I'll be talking and roughly about the RSA uh, security um, conference that we were doing monitoring for uh, and the results of our monitoring uh, that we actually saw in the air and the, you know, what we actually uh, resulted for the last uh, several days that we did the monitoring for. At the, at the conference here, we basically uh, took uh, the conference floor, the exhibition hall, and the walkways that are going between uh, the environments, and we took that information and basically consolidated it down and, and came up with some rough statistics. Uh, what we're actually seeing at the conference on our average for the last couple of days is that roughly in the neighborhood of 55 to 60 percent of the laptops that are at the conference are vulnerable. Uh, and what we talk about by being vulnerable is that they're wirelessly aware. Um, they want to connect to uh, insecure networks, and so your hotspots, your free networks, whether it be at a coffee shop, T-Mobile, any number of hotspots that basically allow unencrypted traffic and it can open connection to it. Um, they're looking for those connections. And we've noticed that uh, in the first day we, we kind of looked and we saw majority of this traffic. Uh, we noticed that uh, most of these devices would be singly exploited by any number of zero day type of attacks. So the latest attacks against Internet Explorer, DHCP, uh, other applications that are in existence with that. So any of those um, over 300 laptops would basically be compromised. Uh, and it's usually a complete compromise. Uh, so you have administrator rights to it. So you can own the laptop, do whatever you wish to be able to be done with that. Uh, from that, we are also noticing that a large number of these devices not only when they connect to these open access points or access points that are open on the showroom floor, um, they are continually trying to use the connection. The laptops don't understand where the results uh, of the connection actually is. They don't understand whether I'm in the office, in the uh, uh, coffee shop, or at home. So they still try to authenticate to the Active Directory. They tr still try to authenticate to the domain servers. They still try to authenticate to uh, Windows Update or any of the other number facts, then their IM programs come up and active and try to go out. And in this situation, all it takes is the attacker to basically respond to that and it will establish a connection and you will try to authenticate to the device. So this is where uh, we are sure that we notice people pulling off uh, these kind of connections and basically stealing hashes and passwords from these devices that are, that are trying to form the levels of authentication with that. Um, what we actually have started seeing is that the attacks from uh, the first day to the second day to today have actually stepped up in their notoriety. Uh, the second day we started seeing more and more people using this to grab hold of the, the laptops. We've seen devices that have captured eight or nine of these and simultaneously trying to gather statistics and exploit these devices. Uh, today we're actually seeing some of the driver level exploits um, that are available, that have been known for the Centrino, the Athros chips, and other devices. We're seeing those being propagated out in the airspace as well. So we're seeing multiple types of these attacks, and again, the kind of sophistication of the attacks is being kind of ramped up um, just to see what's actually being there, uh, whether or not it's the fact that, okay, there's, there's not any low-hanging fruit or there's more um, types of people that are trying new things and that are available with that. So the ideas behind it is that in the nature of wireless, the insecurity, or no matter how well the security is set up, um, you can always have a weak point that's set in by the end user. So if you're not controlling that individual endpoint type of security on the device, or you don't have set forth your policy, your laptops are in danger of a compromise. You also have the capability of that the connection at Starbucks, the connection of that is, is a open connection, is an unauthenticated connection. 
even though you may authenticate through a web interface, the connection itself, anyone in the, in the coffee shop, anyone else can actually listen, hear, see, manipulate the traffic that's going by. Um, that in itself is a big security issue. Uh, most of the people in a, in a security parameter would never allow somebody to say, yeah, we have a shared connection to the internet here and anybody can actually see what's actually going on. Um, and I, I think it's an educational uh, issue that it resides inside of the uh, marketplace uh, that the, the end user is not or is unaware of that as the convenience of wireless typically outweighs the security issues with that or in the fact that there is no security issues. I can check my bank account from um, the Panera Bread or I can buy an airline ticket from Starbucks and it's perfectly safe. There's not an issue uh, in regards to that and I think um, they've figured that out from the internet. Oh, it's perfectly safe to shop. It's perfectly safe to do this in that environment which the internet environment in a broadband sense is very different from an internet environment in an open hotspot uh, wireless sense, uh, as in any of those sites could have been easily manipulated or fished in that control. So we see these areas of being the low-hanging fruit, kind of um, the, the wounded animals in the jungle. So this is where people are going to go and find um, these devices. So um, one of the recommendations we definitely have um, you know, we have a free product on the Air Defense's website that you're welcome to download and control, which does do some mitigation of uh, these risks in association with that. Uh, it's, it's a step that is in the right direction, but again, um, user education is probably key critical to disable the wireless interface when it's not in use. Uh, there's no need to have it connected wirelessly and wired at the same exact time. Um, if it's not being used, disable it. Um, and most of the laptops um, all have single function buttons to turn and turn off the wireless. And most of the people and a lot of organizations, it's not a factor to say, oh, you need to turn your wireless off. Uh, unfortunately, it is a big security risk uh, just sitting uh, at an office where communications can be bridged on and a person can get from one point into the whole network through a laptop. So as we see this, that the wireless is, is an um, interesting technology. It provides a lot of convenience, a lot of uh, mobility, but it also provides a lot of insecurity when it's, it's not used appropriately, as well as there is a lot of issues in, in, in its use that um, just a single security policy or a silver bullet or an application or something like that is going to solve and that is definitely not the case. There's multiple things that have to be done to solve the wireless and security problem.